Hello, hello, and welcome to At Home with Lucas. So I want to talk about Keurig, and in particular, I want to talk about their K-Cups and K-Pods and how much caffeine is actually in them. I'm sure, like me, you've gotten up in the morning, made yourself one single K-Cup or K-Pod, and then consumed that and felt tired. And you're going, no, I just had a cup of coffee. I should be buzzing and ready to go with energy and, and caffeine. But that's not the case. And in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly why that's happening and how you can go about bettering that. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so let's talk about each one of these. So when you think about making a cup of coffee in the morning, do you go for your K-cup or your K-pod, or do you go for a tablespoon or a scoop to add your coffee to your French press or your pour over coffee maker um, or any other kind of maker that you need to add a scoop? Now, you would think that it's going to be relatively the same. A cup of coffee is going to be a cup of coffee, but that is not true at all. And let's just jump into this. Okay. So this is the standard K cup. This is what we've been buying. And we've been told that this thing is going to give you a cup of coffee. Now, Keurigs can have anywhere from six to 18 ounces of water per brewing. So when you think about a Keurig, you think, okay, I'm going to throw in a K cup and then I'm going to go out the door. Well, what you're not realizing is this thing only has anywhere from 0 0.30 ounces to 0.47. That's the highest I've seen. Now, what does that mean in terms of caffeine? Well, this thing right here has 0. 31 ounces in it of ground coffee and that's equal to 35 milligrams of caffeine now you're thinking well what does that mean well a regular cup of coffee has 95 milligrams of caffeine and that's just a regular drip cup of coffee eight ounce <laughs> so this thing that you can only make a minimum of six ounces is only 35 milligrams of caffeine Okay, now you would think, oh, this thing is better, right? This thing, you know, it looks different. It feels maybe a little bit different. Nope, this has 0 0.36 ounces of ground coffee in it. And that's equal to 40 milligrams of caffeine. So when you put this into your Keurig machine and you put in eight ounces of water or you push the eight ounce button or whatever you do with your Keurig machine, you're only getting less than half the caffeine of an eight ounce cup of coffee. Now, when you come over to this guy, this right here is, is a one ounce scoop. So this is one ounce of ground coffee in here. Now, depending on how fine you grind it will determine how much actual caffeine is in here. Cause if you find, if you grind it more fine, then you're gonna get more caffeine because more is gonna fit into this cup. But if you grind it more coarse, you're gonna get a little bit less caffeine. So depending on what you're making, French press, espresso, pour over, you're gonna, of course, grind it differently. So what does that mean? How much caffeine is in this one scoop? This one scoop equals 95 milligrams of caffeine, roughly. That's not science, but that's roughly. I put three to four of these in my pour over every morning. Okay, <laughs> yeah, three to four. That's 380 milligrams of caffeine going into my body every time I make a pour over. Yeah, <laughs> that's insane. I didn't know I was doing that until I did the math and found that out. So this is very shocking to me because I always thought that if I do two of these or two of these, 
it would be equal to my pour over, the amount that I put in my pour over. Not true at all. I actually thought this was going to be similar. There would be roughly the same amount in here as in here. Not true. So when you think about a morning cup of coffee and you think about the, the, the best way to get your boost to start your day, these things are not going to do it. Even if you put two of these into your Keurig machine, you're only going to get 70 milligrams of caffeine. Okay. This one scoop is 95 milligrams of caffeine, 70. Now this one, you're going to get 80. Okay. Still two of these do not even equal a single cup of regular coffee. Yes, I know this is shocking. <laughs> this is very shocking. That's why they do not tell you the caffeine level of this. And that's also why Starbucks has the 2x caffeine because they're realizing that people are drinking these things and it's like they're drinking water or less than a can of Coca-Cola. This has less caffeine than a can of Coca-Cola. So think about that. How much energy do you get from a can of Coke? Not much. Of course, the other stuff slows you down, but still, it's not much. So you have to put like four of these in just to come anywhere near a, a pour over or a French press or whatever you're doing with uh, scooping out ground coffee. Um, so that is, that is huge. On top of all of this, how do you make the equivalent? Well, you have to put in four of these. How are you going to do that? The minimum is six fluid ounces. There is no way anyone is going to be able, unless they have an 18 ounce travel mug to do four, six ounce pours. Like that's just, it's, it's crazy. The Keurig machine is basically a machine that is limiting the amount of caffeine that people are able to consume into their bodies. And I don't understand it. And I think that the machine needs to be redefined. And I, I'm hoping these pods do that. I'm hoping these pods begin to get longer. Okay. Because remember, the, the, the machine can hold this much plastic, okay? So if this gets twice the length, then that would be roughly, let's just say that would be 70 point, or sorry, 0.70 ounces, um, which would get us closer to uh, roughly 80 milligrams of caffeine. So then if you put two of these in, then you'd be getting a good cup of coffee. But still at that point, that's that's only 160 uh, milligrams of caffeine um, that you'd be getting. So that's still not the equivalent of doing a pour over where you're able to do a one ounce scoop per brew. Now, one ounce scoop is going to cost you money. So for anyone out there who is totally sold on doing a pour over or a French press, let me tell you, if you don't watch out, you are going to be spending way more money on coffee than everyone else. A one ounce scoop is one ounce. Like you buy a 12 ounce bag, you buy a 10 ounce bag, that's one of those ounces right here, okay? I put three or four in at a time. So my 12 ounce bag does not last me very long at all. Um, and I'm now starting to rethink how much um, I actually need all three or four scoops. Uh, of course, the flavor is unbelievable and you just cannot beat that. But still, that is a lot of money and a lot of scoops which also brings me back is you have to watch out because they may say 82 pods or 82 K cups for $20 or $30 or $40. And you may think, wow, I'm getting 80, 90, a hundred of these bad boys. And that's a good deal. It's not a good deal because you have to realize what are you actually getting when you buy 82 of these? Well, you're getting anywhere from 25 to 30 ounces of actual ground coffee. 
okay? So you compare that to a 12 ounce or 10 ounce bag of whole bean coffee or ground coffee, and you can pay anywhere from five to let's say $12 for a 12 ounce bag of coffee, right? That's kind of standard, five to 12 bucks for that. So you can add that up in your head right now as we're as I'm talking, and you can realize that these things are not that cheap. They act like they're cheap and they try to come across as being very cheap because they're flaunting 24 pack, 50 pack, 82 pack, 72 pack, 100 pack. They're flaunting this big number of of cups. And in reality, the amount of coffee that you're actually getting, the grounds you're getting it's not that much. And that's where you start to question, you know, how cheap are these things? These, you know, how much am I spending per day on coffee when I'm not even getting that much caffeine? So this whole thing is to, to kind of wrap it up. Let's just wrap it all up. So this whole thing is just super interesting and I'm I'm I think I'm just at the tip of the iceberg right now with caffeine K cups pricing and all that. I think I'm going to have to make a future video where I go a little bit more investigative discovery or, you know, investigative journalist on this, but if I was going to wrap this all up, I would say what are you doing to wake up in the morning? Are you throwing in one of these and then drinking it and saying, man, I am still tired? Well, yes, you're tired because this thing only has 35 milligrams of caffeine in it. This thing only has, you know, maximum of 40 to 45 milligrams of caffeine. That's half a cup of coffee, even if you make a 10 or 12 ounce cup. So people are thinking, you know, I'm going to make a, you know, 12 ounce cup of this. You're just watering it down. Fun fact about um, coffee is the first few ounces that run through here actually strip all the caffeine out. Okay. I'm going to say that again. The first few ounces that run through the coffee strip all of the caffeine out. Okay, then what you get is more water and flavor. Okay, you're going to definitely get more flavor and it's going to weaken it as you add more water. Obviously, you're watering it down. Um, So next time you go to the grocery store and you're going to buy coffee, just think about this. What do I want from my coffee in the morning? Do I want a nice boost? Do I want to charge? Do I want to feel like I can conquer the world because I've had enough caffeine? Maybe go for a ground coffee and do a pour over or do a French press. Maybe skip the Keurig. If you want to wake up and get a little buzz and get get a nice flavored cup of coffee, yeah, you could do this. You could throw that in there. Get yourself a nice little tiny buzz. Maybe you're not into caffeine. Maybe you're scared of caffeine. Maybe you just want a little tiny buzz. Go with the go with this. But I think that that Keurig really needs to address this problem of they're not offering enough caffeine, enough coffee for the heavy consumer the one who wants that big shot to the to the arm to wake up and i hope that either keurig figures this out or somebody else comes along and says we're gonna make a giant (laughs) we're gonna make a giant k-cup you know and we're gonna start making instant coffee stronger and better All right, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully it was informative. 
And if you liked it, definitely smash that like button down below. And if you want to join the at-home family and be a part of this crew, hit that subscribe button. Every time I get a subscriber, I get a boost to make more and more videos. And it's because of you guys, I'm still here. And I'm on my way to 1K, not there yet, but I'm getting close and I'm so, so excited. It is going to better my life, it's gonna better my family's life. And every time you hit that subscribe button, each person, I'm just so thankful. I cannot thank you guys enough. You are amazing. For the people who have subscribed and you're sticking around, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are a blessing to me and my family. It's unbelievable, um, but as always, I thank you so much for watching each and every one of my videos, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.